Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode, episode number 175 for July the 12th, 2022. And yeah, just right off the bat, I want to tell you that I am planning to hold a pop-up sew slash craft day this coming Saturday, July the 16th, 2022 at uh, starting at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time and it'll run until approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or as I usually say until I get bored. <laughs> this one is sort of a special edition because uh, two days before it I will have celebrated my 65th birthday. So I thought Let's have a little special day as well. Not that that means there's anything different from any other pop-up so day. Um, I just want you to say happy birthday to me. <laughs> yeah, it's all about me, isn't it? And when isn't it? But anyways, I hope to see you on uh, Saturday. Uh, come and go as you please. Um, and yeah, bring along your sewing, your quilting, your artwork, your paper crafting, your scrapbooking, your reorganization of your underwear drawer, anything you want. It's going to be drama free, lots of fun, great people to be with. So I hope to see you then. Okay, so current projects that I'm working on. Well, you know, I've been working on my cr Christmas projects. So let me get a picture of that up here. So I have finished all my Christmas table runners. Now, this does not mean that this is the last of table runners I might make, but I'm starting to stockpile potential Christmas presents, as you know, now in July. You can't start too soon. So anyways, here's six of them already completed and everything. You've seen them in bits and pieces, but now they've been totally quilted. They're all bound. They're all ready to go. And uh, as I said, I don't know who they're going to be going to. And the other thing I finished this week was this, and that is not the picture I want to show you. So just give me a second to find that. So here's the Christmas wreath, the twisted Christmas wreath, or I guess the pattern's actually called twisted holiday wreath, um, all completed now. So you can see that I have uh, quilted it and I have put the binding on and it's all done and I added this bow to the top of it. Now I did put the bow on with a safety pin through the back just in case it needed to be washed then the bow could come off. I think it turned out pretty nice. It was a little bit tedious to do. I did use the twisted um, tool. What do they call that? The tiny twisted tool for this particular one. And I've talked about that one before, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But uh, yeah, I think it turned out pretty nice. Now, would I make another one? Well, yes and no. Um, I like the way this one turned out. Um, you could do it in other colors too. You could do it in fall colors. It would look very nice for that. Um, it's just, I found it, it's, it's a lot of little pieces that you cut out. And it does take some time to do that. Um, so I don't know if I'll ever get around to making another one or not. But right now it's in my arsenal of potential Christmas presents again. Not so sure if I want to give this one away though. I might actually want to keep it for myself and put it up at Christmas time. I'm just not sure where it's going to go. But uh, I, I'm sure I can find a place. So anyways, those are the projects that I have been working on lately. Um, so that takes me to, um, what's been happening. What's new? Well, nothing really much new, but we did have craft and chat, uh, this past week on Wednesday. Um, that would be last week when this video goes up and, uh, we had a good time as we always do. And there were a few new faces, uh, in the craft and chat, which are always welcome. If you missed it, sucks to be you <laughs> really no it, it is a good time and if you've thought about joining us it's the first wednesday of every month but you're a little shy don't be this group is extremely supportive extremely friendly extremely welcoming um that's one of the things i like about this group because they're just they're just good friends that's what it is friends getting together working on whatever and just ch ch chatting about whatever and we only chat about things that don't bring us grief, okay? Um, because it's supposed to be relaxing. And I think for the most part, it really is. At least I feel very relaxed after it's over uh, with. I'll let you in on a little secret. 
every time I'm about to have one of those, I kind of have this little sigh where I go, oh, I'm going to do craft and chat today. And I don't know why I have that feeling, because as soon as I get involved with it, as soon as I'm online with everybody else, I'm having the time of my life. So really, I love it. And I'd like to do more of them, uh, except, you know, too much of a good thing gets kind of stale, doesn't it? So that's why they're only once a month on a, the first Wednesday of the month. However, uh, as you heard at the beginning of today's broadcast, I am having a pop-up so day coming up uh, this Saturday, July the 16th, as if I haven't said that enough. And uh, yeah, it's very much the same as Craft and Chat, just longer. And lots more people, lots more fun. Okay, so I mentioned that for that Christmas wreath, I used a tool called the Tiny Twister Ruler or Template. Um, I have several of these. They come in several sizes. They're something a little different. They create those wonky looking windmill blocks. The procedure is very, very easy. But as I already mentioned, it's a little bit tedious. I find a little bit tedious because there's a fair amount of cutting. But what I have done is I've created a tutorial. It's not in this today's episode. It's already posted and there's a link for it in the show notes um, showing you from beginning to end how I use that little tool to create that Christmas wreath. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out. Okay, so subscribers quote of the week. I don't have anything. I've run out. So people, I need some things. You've heard me say this before. Don't be shy. Show us what you're making. Send me one or two pictures. That's all I need. And just 50 words or less uh, about what it is that you've created, what the pattern is, what you created it for, um, that kind of thing. Whatever you want to say about it. And I will feature it here. Okay, so that takes us to the YouTube channel of the week. And this is a YouTube channel called Sew the Distance. And later on in today's uh, episode, I'm going to talk about the creator of that YouTube channel because I had the opportunity, opportunity, rented lips, to interview her. So I'll say more about that in a minute. But let's check out her YouTube channel, shall we? This week's YouTube channel is by Chris O'Neill, and you may know Chris O'Neill already because I interviewed her in this past little while. And if you haven't seen that, go to the show notes and check out my interview with Chris. But she has a really interesting YouTube channel called Sew the Distance. And on this channel, she has a real variety of tutorials showing you how to use up your scraps, how to put certain blocks together, uh, projects, all kinds of things. And if you take a look here uh, at her videos, you can see the kind of thing I'm talking about. Sewers Club Stash Builder, I Spy Quilt, Lessons from an Old Flower Basket Quilt, uh, Postage Stamp Quilt, Embroidery Hoop Art Tutorial with Quilt Blocks. So if you're into embroidery, she has something there as well. And if we take a look at her playlist, you'll get a clearer understanding of what it is that she is presenting on her YouTube channel. Uh, quilting product reviews, crazy quilt project, unboxing videos, uh, monthly updates. She has uh, Jenny's Countdown to Christmas unboxing. Uh, sewing room organization, table runner projects. There's just a wealth of information on this site. Uh, Chris has a very uh, relaxed and calm sort of presentation style, although it is very, very professionally done. So I would suggest that you definitely check out Sew the Distance with Chris O'Neill. So that takes me to future projects. Now, some time ago, I ordered a book. It was a pre-order on Amazon.ca called Home for the Holidays, and it's by Sherry McConnell and her daughter, Chelsea Stratton. Now, if you're not familiar with Sherry and Chelsea, they do a regular um, vlog on YouTube called Quilting Life. Uh, I love it. I find it very informative, very interesting. They're very talented and creative ladies. They design a lot of really interesting patterns, and they also design a line of fabric. Now, I'll be right up front. 
I am not a fan of their fabric, and that has nothing to do with the quality of it or the design of it. It has to do with their color palette. It's just a color palette that, for me, is not my, my style. But for somebody else, I'm sure it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little pale for me. It tends to lean a little bit towards the pastel -y colors. Um, but nevertheless, I know lots of people like that color. That's just me, and that is not a criticism of these two very talented uh, artists. Um, I have bought some of their patterns before and I've always found them very easy to follow, very clearly written. And so when I they announced that they were coming out with this book, Home for the Holidays for Christmas Sewing, I was excited about it. So I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. I made a little video clip to show you about that. This week's pattern on my vision board is not a pattern at all, but it is a book that I just got. I pre-ordered this book uh, some time ago, back last April, and I just got it last week. And it's called Home for the Holidays, Quilts and More to Welcome the Season by Sherry McConnell and Chelsea Stratton. They're a mother-daughter team who run the YouTube channel Quilting Life. I watch them on a regular basis, find them very informative, very entertaining, and they've got a lot of really interesting patterns that they have designed themselves. Now, they do design a fabric line as well, and that I am not that fond of because it's just not my color palette. It's too pastel -y for me. But when they first started talking about this book coming out, I thought this was something I had to have because there are quite a number of patterns in this that I want to do for Christmas. And also one thing I do like about their patterns is that many of them, although geared towards Christmas, given the right colors, could be done for almost any time of the year. So I thought I would show you what this book is all about. And this is going to be a little awkward as I switch over to me on my camera. And uh, here is the book right here. And I've marked a few pages, as you can see, with sticky notes. These are projects that I think I might want to do at some point in time. So this one, the first one I'm going to show you here, is called Christmas Eve Lap Quilt. And there's a picture of it. Now, you know I love stars. And this is a small project. It's a lap quilt, so it probably won't take that much time to do. So if I want to create it for a gift or something like that, I'm sure I could do that in no time at all. So that's one. And another one that caught my eye is, of course, a table runner. It's called Crystal Sky, Crystal Sky, Crystal Sky <laughs> Table Mates. And uh, again, a star. They do a lot of things with stars in this book. And again, that's why I was attracted to it. But, and I do like the color scheme of this particular one in the blues because it would not only work at Christmas time, but it would also work as a nice winter table runner as well. Uh, then there's a pattern called Amaryllis. Again, a variation of a star. A little bit more complex by the looks of things. But again, I think it would look really nice as a Christmas pattern in Christmas fabrics. But again, this is another one that I think if you made it in, um, say, batiks or K-Facet or something like that, I think it would look stunning in those kind of colors. Another one here called Mistletoe. Oh, Mistletoe. Yes. Um, basically, it's a variation of a bear claw, I think. And uh, again, very versatile pattern. Doesn't have to be just for Christmas. And as you can see, I have picked out quite a few. Now, this one is a little different because it's called Farmhouse Flannel Quilt. Now, pattern-wise, let's see if I can get it in the camera here. Pattern-wise... There isn't anything really complex about it. But the reason it, uh, uh, it caught my eye is because I have a whole bunch of fat quarter flannel pieces. I bought a big bundle by mistake at a retreat a few years ago that I thought they were cotton. They aren't. They aren't. They're flannel. And I just didn't know what to do with flannel. Um, so they've been sitting in my stash for a couple of years. And I thought, hey, why not make something like this? 
because it's simple, it's fast, and it uses up those flannel um, back quarters, which otherwise you're just going to sit around here forever. And then this one. Now, this one I'm not completely sure of. It's called, get it here, poinsettia. Uh, in my way of thinking, those are tulips. <laughs> they don't really look like poinsettias to me. Um, however, uh, again, this is a, a very versatile pattern, uh, depending on the colors you pick. I think it would look really neat if you did each one of the um, flowers in sort of your scraps. Just make it more scrappy looking. I think it would be very colorful. You could make it to look very spring-like, uh, that kind of thing too. Um, so, yeah, that's another one that caught my eye. Now, another thing in this book is there are recipes in here as well. Uh, so, you know, you're getting quite a lot of value for your money, I think, on this book. As I showed you, I've got these pages all marked. Um, I am definitely feel that I'm going to get my money's worth out of this book. Was it expensive? Well, it was about $35 Canadian on Amazon. That's where I picked it up. Uh, you might get it for a little less at a quilt store or somewhere else online. And definitely, if you're an American, it's going to cost you less than that. Um, in fact, U.S. price on the back of this book is listed as $26.99. I think it's worth the money. As I said, their patterns are usually very well written. And uh, the only thing I can say against this book is I just don't like the color scheme. That's just me. You may love it a lot, but that's okay. I don't have to stick to their color scheme, do I? So that's Home for the Holidays by Sherry McConnell and Chelsea Stratton. Now... Just as an aside, I had a little problem getting their book, and it had nothing to do with Sherry or Chelsea. It had everything to do with Amazon. Now, you know I love Amazon. Um, I'm a regular shopper on Amazon, but then again, who isn't? Uh, and I pre-ordered this book and paid for it, and I knew it was going to take a while to come uh, to me because I ordered it in about April. Um, I did get an, a, a notice about a week or so ago telling me that, um, it was more than a week ago, about two weeks ago, telling me that I could expect delivery of it by, I think it was June the 27th. Okay, great. June 27th came and went, and I didn't receive the book. So I went into the tracking system of Amazon and looked for it, and it said, yeah, your order has been delayed. It should arrive, and they gave me the date the next day. And of course, Amazon always says, if it doesn't arrive, then please contact us for a refund or whatever. Well, it didn't show up. So um, I did go into Amazon and I asked them about this. I went into their chat mode for that and said, you know, hey, it was a pre-order, whatnot, what's happening. And they got right back to me and said, oh, we're so sorry. They're always very apologetic. It has been mis- direct it so would you can reorder it if you wish well that ticked me off a little bit i was a little disappointed and i was also thinking if i pre-order this book you know how long is it going to take this time and will it be misdirected again and i really wanted this book so anyways yes i did reorder it but in the meantime i sent an email to sherry mcconnell the the author co-author of the book, telling her what had happened and whatnot, and said to her, you know, by any chance, do you know any quilt stores or online stores in Canada that are carrying the book? Because I really want it, and I don't want to have to, I know I could order it from a quilt store in the States, but the problem with ordering from the States is basically the shipping. Um, one, it takes a while, and two, it may cost me a lot of money for this book. Plus, I have to pay the exchange rate on the book as well, and that's not good. So, you know, this book, this book was costing me on Amazon about $35. It could be doubled the price if I had to go through a quilt store in the States to get it. Um, and as much as I love their patterns, I'm not paying $70 for that book. So I wrote to her, and I got an email back. I just got it back the other day. Now, it took her a little time, and she apologized for that, but this is why it took so much time. She writes, Hi, Stephen. Thanks so much for your email. I wanted to reply 
I, I waited to reply until I heard back from my publisher about possible options for you to purchase. Here's what they sent. Well, a whole list of places in Canada where I could order the book. Um, she says, I'm hopeful that one of these options will work for you. Thank you uh, so very much again. Happy quilting, Sherry. I thought that was great of Sherry. To be honest, I didn't expect to get a reply. It wasn't her problem. Okay, it had nothing to do with her. It had everything to do with Amazon and the publishing company, I guess. Um, more Amazon and the publishing company. But when I got that, I thought that was above and beyond on customer service. So I wrote back to her and thanked her and let her know that uh, actually I did get it from Amazon again. But thank you so much for for doing this, you know, because uh, that took some time and some effort and I appreciate it a great deal. So I tell you this because I want to support Sherry and her daughter in their quilting life venture and in their publications and everything else that they do because I feel very positively about them. So, yeah, I want to share that with you. Okay, so that takes me to uh an interview that i have done uh last week and it's up today i did this with chris o'neill and chris o'neill as you probably already know if you saw well because i just put up for you chris o'neill's youtube channel so the distance and so here's my little teaser to her interview so here's a question for you then uh since you do collect antique quilts how do you feel about this movement lately of cutting up old quilts and making them into like jackets or clothing? I'm all about it. I think that, you know, go for it. There are so many quilts that end up in the landfill. And I think uh, some of the people that are against it aren't hitting the, you know, thrift stores and don't see yeah. it. Uh, I have a particular thrift store um, that I go to and I, I become friends with the people that own them. And it, please do that because they'll call you. I get calls, you know, say I do yeah. a quote come in. But I have one in particular that uh, they are not allowed to even put old quilts out on the floor. Oh, call me. I mean, she doesn't. She'll. She doesn't. She's not allowed to put them aside. But she'll call me, and I usually run over. Uh, but the thing she told me is, I said, if you get any in that have holes, because I love to repair old quilts too. Yeah. If you get any holes or anything like that that are tattered, you know, please call me. And she says I'm not allowed to. They have to go right into the dumpster. So that makes me wonder. Which I've often thought, do I need? to go over to the dump. Can you call me and tell me when I need yeah. to go look at the dumpster? Uh, because there's so many quilts out there that just get tossed or they're just like, they don't sell at the thrift shops yeah. and they get bundled up and, you know, sent to recycling or whatever it is they do to them. So I'm all about making clothing. Use the quilts that you have, do whatever you want. It's your quilt. Do with it what you want. When you buy it, that's totally up to you. No, I'm now, I just finished doing an interview with another really interesting uh, person, and that one will come out next week, and I'll tell you more about it then. Okay, so that takes me to my online fabric store of the week, or online quilting store, and this one's a little different because they don't sell fabric. They sell customized sewing furniture. They are a Canadian company. They're called Eddie Crest, and... You know, if I had the money and if I want to redo this room, which I don't because I'm very happy with my sewing room, um, I would definitely want some of their cabinets and things that they design for sewing rooms because they're absolutely beautiful and very functional. Um, and I think they'll even custom build for you as well. So here's my review of Eddie Crest. This week's online quilt store is actually not a quilt store. It is a sewing furniture outlet. Uh, this is one is called uh, Eddie Crest. And Eddie Crest is a Canadian manufacturer of custom sewing tables and uh, matching accessories. And if we take a look at their about, we'll get a little idea of what they're all about. And it says, who are we? 
Eddy Crest was established by Adam Eddy in 2008 after graduating from industrial engineering from Ryerson University. His passion for woodworking coupled with his analytic mentality set in motion the creation of practical, organized, and fun pieces. His disdain for inferior artificial materials and furniture ensures that Eddy Crest will not sacrifice the longevity of the products for the easy, cheap alternatives. The introduction of CNC technology in the manufacturing process has provided the outlet to build consistently and accurately, allowing Eddy Crest to continue building and growing at their shop located on the Eddy family farm. So they say, they go on to say that they specialize in creating sewing furniture using quality materials. And yeah, they are very well known here in Canada and they are known for quality. I have never bought anything from them. In fact, I would love to maybe buy some things from this company someday but you know i've already customized my sewing room so yeah as much as these look really cool um i uh, don't really need it but some people i am sure are looking to redo their sewing room and this might be the site for you now is it cheap oh no oh definitely not look here at some of the prices however it is quality manufactured um so you are going to pay for what you get. Um, so let's just take a look around to get a, a feel for the kind of things that they have. So they have sewing, furniture, cutting tables, pressing tables, accessories, virtual consultation. All right, well, let's go to sewing furniture. So here you have your basic sewing table. Uh, it looks like these do fold down so you can raise or lower your machine. Um, there's a cutout, so you can have everything on the same level. And it looks like these are designed for, uh, you know, easy placement in almost any, any setting. Um, Style-wise, they're very functional looking. They may not be the sexiest looking sewing furniture that I have seen, say, compared to koala cabinets and things like that. But nevertheless, I think they're very uh functional um and as it says they do make them from quality uh materials let's take a look at cutting tables so here you have one that will fit very nicely it looks like it collapses so you could if you have a small space you could fold it up um and then bring it out uh again here's another design type with lots of storage built into that and similar with that one and they they seem to get a little larger um so they would really fit wherever this is called the rise desk so i have a feeling this is one i wonder if it's electric i'm just looking here showing some pictures of it looks like you can well i don't know if you can tilt it or not but let's just take a look uh, okay, so um, it says our Rise One Piece tabletop desk is designed to pro provide you with multiple work heights and programmable settings for most common working positions. Okay, so this is, um, and we don't want that. This is an electric table that moves up and down, which is kind of nice. Um, note shipping included for all provincial major routes. Okay, so that's not bad. Shipping's included if you're Canadian, of course. Um, let's look at pressing tables. Well, that's kind of a neat design. I have not seen that before. So you've got sort of the, they call it the classic taper. Uh, so, you know, if you are you need an ironing board, there you go. Um, another one there. The only thing is it's not very wide. Uh, it's long, but not very wide. And that's the only two that they have. They probably do custom as well for a price. Uh, let's take a look at what they have for accessories. Well, they have cabinetry, storage shelving, sewing machine bed extension. Um, bed extension. So is that the acrylic part I wonder they're talking about? Let's take a look. Hmm. Yeah, it is. 
acrylic sewing machine extension table, 24 by, oh, it's a so steady table. Okay. They must have uh, some affiliation with so steady. All right. What other accessories do we have? Quilt mounts, ruler rack. Okay. So they have not just sewing furniture. Um, let's take a look under virtual consultation. Meet a member of our team over video chat. Discuss what model of Eddie Crest furniture will work best for you. We use Zoom, which will allow us to meet over video chat. The meeting location link will be set in the confirmation email. We have found that using a tablet or cell phone works best for these sessions to give you more mobility around the room. Remember to click join now. For this video chat, you'll need nothing but the room where you're intending to sew and a measuring tape. Our virtual consultation sessions are not recorded and are completely free. Well, that's kind of interesting. So you don't have to go to them. They'll come to you in a sense. Okay. Well, if you're looking for, uh, you're upgrading your sewing room, you're looking for some sewing furniture. And if you're Canadian, for sure, I would definitely check out uh, Eddie Crest Sewing Furniture Designs. And so that's bringing me to the end of this episode of The Idiot Quilter. But just a reminder that the International Stitch Marathon happens on July the 22nd. That's coming up very fast. Uh, it starts at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. You'll have to do the math to figure out your time zones for it. And it is a Zoom. And all are welcome. And it should be a really fun day. There are 11 co-hosts for this so you're going to get to meet some other youtube channel creators i have already done um little blurbs about each one of the creators uh, that are co-hosting this um so you can go back on some of the videos and see that but also in the show notes there is a link to their youtube channels as well so i hope to see you there as well so there's lots coming up in july pop-up so day July 16th, that's this Saturday, starting at 8 a.m. <clears throat> All are welcome. And then we have International Stitch Marathon the weekend after. Actually, the Friday after that Saturday. It's on a Friday, not on a weekend. Pop-up so days on the weekend, on Saturday. Okay, so I think that's all for me this week. And uh, I've got to get this up because Walter and I are off to Kawartha Quilting to pick up my batting that I pre-ordered and another AccuQuilt die that I ordered and they've got their Christmas in July event starting today and all their Christmas fabric are going to be out so I'm looking forward to doing some shopping and I'll tell you all about that on the next episode of the Idiot Quilter. See you then. Bye for now.